How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific 1 Eastern. And we got a lot to get into today. It's Thursday on this show. You know what that means. Last night, AW Dynamite. The Dynamite Go Home Show for the Full Gear pay-per-view coming up on Saturday, 8 Eastern. Got a bunch of matches announced for the show. And we have a couple of uh, things that have not been announced, which I actually don't think are going to be announced. I believe the mystery partner for MJF, which obviously everybody's expecting to be Samoa Joe, I believe that's probably going to uh, be a secret all the way up to ring entrances. But I don't know. Maybe we'll find out on Friday. But we have a full card for the show thus far. More will be added, I'm sure, on Rampage and Collision. And, of course, Collision is airing on Friday this week because the pay-per-view is Saturday. And we've got a Rampage lineup, a Collision lineup, and we've got the full AEW Dynamite report from Wednesday. So a lot to get into from AEW. And in fact, yes, Saturday, another new member of the AEW roster will debut, sign their contract. We'll tell you about that, plus who it could be, because I do not know who it's going to be. But I got ideas. Kota Bushi has signed. Well, actually, he signed with AEW a long time ago. But for some reason, he just got his graphic yesterday. And then we got notes on Ric Flair and MJF. WWE going to France. Logan Paul is going to Elimination Chamber. And we'll talk about one of his potential next feuds. The Globe Theater in L.A. is unclosing after uh, one day of closing down. And, of course, we got the NXT ratings and plenty more. If you want to text us today, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. F4W Online on Threads, Instagram, and Cameo. That's F4W Online. At Brian Alvarez on the X. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Observer Live. Mike Semper Vivi also at WrestlingObserver.com. I was looking at the chat here. Is YouTube chat and people are talking about that uh, that that uh, what about the dragon match last night? What was it called? Uh, something that they it was a Gaiden dragon, last of the Gaiden dragon, of the face dragon. of the Gaiden, something. What was it? I, I see. I'm old. Everybody, I'll play. What was it there, Dom? I think it was the man who erased his name. Well, it was Zab, but it was like oh, yeah. a dragon or something like that. Yeah. And uh, you know, people are talking about. Oh, you know, they, they took a lot of things from the game. If you would have watched the game, you would uh, understand some of the things they did, like, uh, you know, attacking somebody with a bicycle. Oh, come on. And I thought, you know, here's an analogy for you. Let's say that, uh, you know, remember that Lord of the Rings? Let's say that they had a video game, mm-hmm. and they were going to sponsor AEW to do a, a Lord of the Rings street fight. That doesn't mean you got to throw some bloke into a volcano, brother. Like... Do you know how dangerous a bicycle is? Number one, the funny thing about the bike is they did two bike spots in that match. One of them was uh, Kota Bushi riding a bicycle down the ramp and hitting people with a pipe on the way down and around the ring. Guys, I don't want to hear one thing about NXT after that spot. This was the phoniest, fakest looking, corny, goofy, lame spot I've ever seen. Until he got clotheslined off the bike and almost killed himself. That was insane. So we went from one extreme to then Takeshita grabs the bike. And this bloke just starts swinging this bike at people. (laughs) And there's like pedals going into people's backs and chains. And my God. (laughs) I mean, hey, it was fine and all. But, you know, it was was fine. Was it really fine? It was fine. People enjoyed it. It, it, absolutely they did and i didn't know anything about the game because i play like two video games and that's not one of them so i didn't know anything about the backstory or anything like that but it was a spectacle if nothing else it was a spectacle i i really anticipated we would hear a list of injuries coming out of it like kyle fletcher is actually concussed after the choke slam that he took from big show and that Hey, look, we got what we wanted, both. Uh, We got 
Paul White out of there quickly, going backstage like you suggested, and we got a big slam from Powerhouse Hobbs, which is what I wanted. I just didn't know it was going to be through the front of a Hyundai. I mean, that was something else. And again, Kota Ibushi, it's funny because, and I, I hate to say this, I'll be that guy, I'll take the slings and arrows, but... I voted for Kota Ibushi as somebody who follows Japanese wrestling and somebody who's seen his whole career and knows what he means to DDT, have seen the matches over there that he's had for years. I thought in the Japanese category, he was a Hall of Famer. With that said, if you never saw Kota Ibushi in Japan and have only seen him in his roles with AEW... You wouldn't think he was anything special. And that dude, I think physically at this point, is toast. He keeps putting oh, himself in he's positions wrecked. where it's going to get worse. And that's what Dave kept like qualifying. it. Well, he's done the worst things before. But every day that goes by, that's another one on his clock. And he does absolutely insane stuff. He's not going to stop, much like a Darby Allen. He's going to do what he's going to do, and you have to accept that. And I do, but it is brutal sometimes to actually watch him go out and do his thing but uh it accomplished what it needed to accomplish it was a complete spectacle like i said if nothing else and probably made for pretty compelling television and i, I do want to add this too though tony shivani and you won't ever really hear me say anything too bad about tony shivani ever because i grew up with him as one of my announcers with jim crockett promotions and i, I love him and everything but one of the things he and Dusty Rhodes would always do way too much of is giggle it up and laugh as carnage is taking place. And I know some of it's ridiculous. And I know like Excalibur and Taz, I like together. But when they're all out there and it's a lot of like laughing it up and giggling it up, it's too much of that during a match like that. I know some of the spots It was ridiculous. ridiculous. There's a guy on a bike with a pipe. Was, but these guys are taking brutal, brutal they for some of the brutal each stuff other that with they were signs doing. And... I know, but if you're going to do that, then actually give it some gravity to it as well, too. As ridiculous as it is. It was hard That's to give any Jim gravity. That's where Jim Ross was that. always really great. That's where Lance Russell really stood out, too, with all the ridiculous stuff in Memphis. But he made it sound a lot more official than what you're watching is just, you know, a complete joke. These guys aren't really getting hurt when, in fact, they really are. This fella here goes, spoken like a guy who's never played the game. Yeah, me and 90% of the Dynamite audience. <laughs> I asked the name of the game and almost nobody could even remember. Don't even tell me I'm in the minority here. It's, it's, now, it's not MLB the show. We'll you know review that. the show later, but we got three shows coming up from AEW. Rampage Friday has Tony Storm and Emi Sakura. We got MJF and Jay White both doing presumably separate sit-down interviews with Renee. For Collision, we got Dax Harwood, or as it said on the graphic, Dax Hardwood. <laughs> he will be facing Roosh. Bad match. I love it. Roosh going to beat Dax? It. They can't I beat will, Roosh. Yeah. They can't beat Roosh. No, you, no, you cannot beat Roosh, no. And then we got no, no. Sheeta and Statlander versus Saray and Ruby Soho. I think even more so, Roosh doesn't think you can beat Roosh. And then, you know, it's like, you know what's funny is, is the other day on this show... I was, I was ranting about, how do we have a show in the Young Bucks' hometown, and you have not announced a match for the Young Bucks? Mm -hmm. You haven't even announced they're going to be on the show. And then, like, an hour later, they're announced for the show in a big match. How does that happen? But then, I complain about another thing, and it's, like, double down on. This Daniel Garcia thing, okay? Mm. Listen. Daniel Garcia was doing largely nothing. He was just there. He would show up. He'd do matches. He'd dance. He was a guy. He was not in the title picture. He was not close to being in the title picture. He wins a match on Rampage. And suddenly he calls out MJF and they're going to have a World Heavyweight Championship match on Wednesday. Okay, fine. Whatever. Now he's a world title contender. So you do the match on Wednesday. He puts up a great fight. But he loses. Okay, fine. Well, what's the follow-up to that? Well, the follow-up is, he goes to Collision on Saturday. He gets beat. And now he's absolutely, completely, totally, randomly matched up with Miro. 
I don't know why. And you think Miro's losing to Daniel Garcia? No chance. So now Daniel Garcia is going to lose to Miro. How am I supposed to take this world title thing seriously? It's one thing when, like, just anybody gets a shot, okay? But at least, like, if you get a shot, we should see you as a world title type competitor. And if you lose, maybe we should see that, well, you lost, but you're still, like, a top guy. You just had a shot at the world title. Exactly. This was, you're a guy, you're randomly given a world championship match, and then you're immediately, he's doing more jobs now than before he challenged for the title. So I don't know what's going on. But that's announced for Friday. And then we've got Full Gear, which is MJF versus Jay White for the title. Hikaru Shida versus Tony Storm for the women's title. I think it's obvious where that one's going. Orange Cassidy versus John Moxley for the international title. We've got Ricky Starks and Big Bill versus FTR, House of Black, and Roosh and Drillistico for the tag titles. Chris Statlander versus Julia Hart and Sky Blue in a three-way. Hangman versus Swerve in a Texas death match. Sting, Darby, and Adam Copeland versus Christian, Luchasaurus, and Nick Wayne. We've got the Golden Jets, Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho versus the Young Bucks. Whoever wins gets the AEW Tag Team title shot. And if the Golden Jets lose, they must disband. And then we've got MJF and a mystery partner against the Guns for the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. On the pre-show. So no, it does not matter whether or not they announce MGF's opponent before the show. Because you're not selling a single ticket or a pay-per-view. It's it's on the it's free. It's on the pre-show. It doesn't matter. So I presume they'll just tell you as they start heading to the ring. Back in a moment, we got more on Saturday. A new person debuting, Observer Live. So it was explained, apparently... Miro is mad at Daniel Garcia because Daniel Garcia danced in front of CJ mm -hmm. last week on Collision. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember it happened. Yeah, well, yeah, I remember that happened, and I can see why that's taking place now. But, uh, yeah, I don't so know. So there was the other argument. I won't uh, go into it in great detail, but uh, the comment that, well, you know, People hated the rankings. Now they want the rankings back. No, no, we, no we do not want the rankings no, back. No, the rankings, The not. rankings sucked, okay? Yes. I hated the rankings forever. Mm -hmm. And you don't need rankings to only have certain people challenge for a title. You do not. You do not need rankings. Like, if you want Daniel Garcia to challenge for the title, then he wins a bunch of matches, he challenges for the title. Yeah. He doesn't just do nothing and then win one match against some rando, and then all of a sudden he's a world title. You don't need rankings for that. That's like the old argument that we must have a brand split because we need two different rosters. What? No, just put half the people on one show, half the people on the other show. If you want to switch them back and forth, do it. If not, don't. You don't have to have a brand split to keep people on separate shows. You just isn't have to keep track. Of the, isn't that part of the sociology and the psychology of the booking is to get a group of people to subconsciously, as you're building somebody up, want to rally behind them, you know, by doing things like, you know, having them win Bill Goldberg got over because he went on a winning streak. You know, it's as simple as that. You don't have to have ratings. And unfortunately, while there are ratings, I mean, why do rankings. we have... Rankings. Right, rankings. Why do we have rankings? We have rankings in boxing because it's a way to get money from promoters because you sanction a title match between a contender and this person's got to be here and they're all nonsense for the most part they really are and in wrestling they have never worked on any level and they didn't work with aew and it's just something that was ridiculous it's like keeping tracks of wins and losses why unless you're pro wrestling illustrated which is you know part foot and kayfabe you, you shouldn't be doing that it just confuses the issue it's unnecessary it's unneeded and it's something that again it, it's a lazy crutch to fall back on oh they're they're ranked that's why they're having this match now it doesn't make much sense all right a full gear this is from wrestling observer.com aw will unveil a new member of they of the promotions roster tony khan hyped aw quote has agreed to terms with one of the world's best wrestlers he said this is a this person is this person and not say male or female. This person is a pro who is known and respected by virtually every AEW fan. They'll come to LA to sign their contract Saturday at full gear. Man, I hope Filthy can still do the show with me tomorrow. 
a pro who is known and respected mm-hmm. by virtually every AEW fan. All right. So the names being bandied about, there were three uh, names being bandied about yesterday. The Anticipation and Speculation Station. Let's go. I do not know who it is. Dave last night noted that uh, he had been told who it was, but two people told him who it was, and they both told him a different name. Okay. So the three names are A, Will Ospreay, Mm-hmm. Mercedes Monet mm-hmm. and the former Dolph Ziggler. All right. Nick now, Nemeth. this, okay, so here's, here's my arguments for and against everything. So my arguments for Dolph Ziggler is that, uh, you know, they're, they're not, I mean, you know, this wasn't like Tony Khan on TV did a promo and built it up as this big giant thing. I mean, they did a social media tweet, and I think Tony Schiavone might have mentioned it on commentary in passing. So that kind of leans towards, well, you know, it's not a massive name. Best, I mean, Ziggler's a great pro wrestler. He is known and respected by virtually every AW fan. Could be him. Okay? Yeah, rumors of him going down to work WWC in Puerto Rico, so never know. So then the other, the other one is, uh, is Will Ospreay. All right, Will Ospreay's New Japan contract does not expire until February. And Dave last night said, well, you know, maybe uh, New Japan and AEW have a relationship, so New Japan would let him sign with AEW now, knowing that they'd get... It's like, what? Yeah, no. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No. It's the it's exact same the way the opposite way. Mm-hmm. The, you know, they have him. He's he's been he didn't he doesn't need to sign with AEW to be used by AEW, and you know New Japan can keep him under contract until uh, February, and then he goes to AEW. I just think it'd be very very weird for New Japan to just let him out of his contract, let him go to AEW, sign a contract there, with the idea that well you know they'll they'll still let us borrow him. That I, yeah. I, I just I guess it's possible. No, that would be dumb. Not saying it's impossible, but I find still, that improbable. I find it highly improbable because you still have to build to the dome if you're New Japan, and it, it makes absolutely no sense business-wise. You can put Julia in that category as well, too, for this conversation. Yeah, we could uh, could be could be Julia. That's possible. That's possible. And uh, but the other name that everyone's talking about is Mercedes, and uh, I believe. That it is Mercedes. They uh, they made it very clear it's a they. They did not say he, because obviously she is not a he. They did no. not say she, because it would be patently obvious who it was. Oh. They said they. And so uh, I believe that uh, it's Mercedes. Monet. No, it's Mercedes Monet. Monet in no. L.A. Unless you're going to call her Maxine Dupree every week. Which you will not. I, I can try. Nor will Lance. Lance will not pronounce the name like that. Even though he, he will get mad at me for not saying Monet properly. Monet. We shall see. Who it's Are you excited about her coming in? They should be. The biggest issue with Mercedes is, can her body hold up? Is she injury prone? We'll find out. She has not necessarily been throughout her career, but you never know. The injury, again, getting over that hump, what happened earlier on this year, they need her. If it, Look, they absolutely need her. It's the same reason that they need Julia, honestly, is because they need another top-tier woman that can draw attention, who can have a, again, a variety of matches with a variety of different people, but most importantly, be a star attraction when you're facing off against the Britt Bakers, the Tony Storms, the people like that, the people you need her to be a star against. So, well, it would be I should good. I should know that somebody brought up here that uh, you know, not ever. There's no way virtually every AEW fan knows Julia, and that's true. But here, but here, hey, let me tell you this: I have been given the impression that Tony Khan believes that every single AEW fan knew. Mariah May. And I'm telling you that they didn't, okay? They did not, no. So, if he thinks... Why would they? I don't know, but if that's what he thinks, and I'm sure he thinks the same thing about Julia. Well, look, a higher percentage of 
his fans know who Julia and Mariah May are because, again, they're a different type of wrestling fan. The highest percentage of them, many W, I mean, most of the WWE fans, probably, what, 10% would have any idea who she was. I, you know, I think that's that's being trapped too much in the bubble because, again, as, as much as I cover women's wrestling and as much stardom as I watch, I don't expect anybody really to know who a lot of those women are you see some of them were buzzed now because of things like pro wrestling illustrated and they've talked about utami and suri and, and and a lot of the women there but the reality of the situation is most people don't and that's why i didn't think it was the end of the world to not over promote mariah may she's coming in for a specific purpose in a storyline built in with tony storm she mentioned last night i came over i went to stardom just like you did i bet you a lot of AEW fans a lot of wrestling fans didn't know tony storm was over in stardom bet you they have no idea rhea ripley was over in stardom you know so i i i don't know i that is a surprise to me that he would be, I can see being excited, but there was no reason to believe that Mariah May would be known by a majority of the fan base of AEW. I'm surprised about that. All right, we've got uh, Kota Bushi. They announced that he is all elite. Even though he's been all elite for a while now. Well. But he is definitely now all elite. They remember they didn't put the graphic up. The graphic is very important, I believe. Yes, Apparently. Ric Flair and MGF met for the first time ever at AEW Dynamite. This from WrestlingObserver.com. Flair wrote on X. You ever seen Flair's tweets? Yeah. It's like bizarre. It's like every word starts with a capital letter. Almost like he's not even doing them. I don't care who's doing them. Who's, why do they do that? So Why is every word it. No, no, no. No, no, not no DJ, not all caps. The beginning of every word is capitalized. <laughs> it's well. It's <laughs> capital I, capital met, capital the, MJF, capital last, capital night. Why does he do that? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it is says that... uh it said all in caps. <laughs> That's what you said, DJ. You said all in caps. That's not all in caps. All in caps would be the whole word is capitalized. This is only the first letter of the word is capitalized. Does Fifi do his, uh, what was Fifi the maid? What is her real name? Oh, I see what you did here. What? I see. He wrote it all capital I in capital C caps. How am I supposed to notice that? Mm. I need bespectacles or whatever. Anyway. Did Did you steal that shirt from Colonel Buck Robley? Did you rock in a yellow shirt? Yeah, I like it. It's my watchdog's shirt. Ah, show it off. What's going on with the watchdogs? That's what I do on Friday sometimes. Oh. Now you just screwed up my whole thing about Ric Flair. You idiot. Back in a moment. Observer Live. Well, I'll read this tweet. Then I got to do the world famous AWTV report. Ric Flair wrote, I met MGF last night. Oh, my God. He has the gift. (laughs) Which, by the way, the gift was all caps. I'm honored to have met you. It's I like bring that up because someone was like, I think there's an app where if you uh, want to do all... Ca- uh, no, this is, he, has, he has a mix here. I'm honored to have met you. Looking, <laughs> an app? Don't you just need the caps lock to do that? Looking forward to working with you and our relationship going forward. <laughs> looking forward to working with you and our relationship going Uh-oh. forward. You've Run got a MJF. gift that so few have. You're special. <laughs> Woo! Rick can't wait to steal it and pawn it. He's excited. Oh I am sure he is. Look, MJF, as he is the next Ric Flair, or really he's the first MJF. we got to stop, you know, sometimes comparing people to the past, but he's certainly this generation's Ric Flair. It's just he hasn't been treated as such recently, but he had a much better night last night. I thought AEW had a much better night last night. Well, I'll get to that in a second, but a couple of quick notes here. France will be hosting Backlash in 2024, Saturday, May 4, 2024. It'll be called Backlash France because (laughs) it's it's in France. Yes. Yes. Yeah, they want to make sure that you know it's in France. (laughs) This is Backlash France coming up on May 4th. Not Backlash Saudi, Backlash France. Logan Paul is going to Perth, Australia, February 2024 for Elimination Chamber. And I don't know 
I was going to say who, what, when, where, and why, but I don't know what, and how. when, and where, but I know why, and I know how. It's fake. All right. Uh, it's very, very likely they are going to do a Logan Paul Bad Bunny match. It has been discussed, and not sure where it's going to happen, but could be Australia for all I know. Who knows? We shall see. Hey, they are going to England next year, are they not? Don't they have a pay-per-view? Didn't they announce they're doing something in the UK Berlin. next year? Oh, Berlin, just Berlin so far? Because I, I remember... Well, and Dave France. Talk. Well, France, yes. But... I know Osprey, they can, the AEW in theory can offer him Wembley Stadium. Yes, they can. I don't know. Uh, to me, it's more, far more impressive that WWE can also offer you WrestleMania. Not only WrestleMania, they can offer you a big show, even if it's not in Wembley, in your home country. So I think those things are really kind of a lot more even than you would think, or at least as presented sometimes. And finally, NXT, 703,000.21 and 18 to 49. And uh, some guy on the board was really mad that Lance was reviewing NXT like it was somehow my fault. Listen, you don't, <laughs> you don't have to like NXT, everybody, but you know what? As far as growth year to year, no wrestling show anywhere has seen as much growth in the last year as NXT has. So it's what it is. And yeah, the show, the show sucked Tuesday. What do you want me to do about it? I, but to me, and I guess it's because we watch so much wrestling, you know, I put a lot more stock in other shows. And I'm not saying that NXT is a night off for me as a wrestling viewer. But honestly, as long as you give me enough mellow and Ilya and good stuff like that, I can a lot of times tolerate some of the other nonsense. Sure, and a of lot course. Of the, the green people that they have. So I, I don't know. I look at that show a lot differently. All right. So, here we go, everybody. I got to get going it. here. Let's go. Hook and Orange versus Moxley and Wheeler Yuta. They had a good match, and for the, only the second time in his entire AEW career, Hook was pinned by Wheeler Yuta, which likely sets up Wheeler versus Hook in an FTW title match. And the other big point of the match was Orange went for the Orange Punch on Moxley, and Moxley just no-sold it. And so now Orange is second-guessing everything about himself. I know how it feels, Orange. I remember when I only had one move, and I hit Nick Gage with it three times. He didn't sell it. You know what happened to me afterwards? I was killed. So good luck Saturday, brother. Then we had the announcement that uh, Swerve and Hangman were going to have a, uh, a stare-down, and they were not allowed to attack each other, put hands on each other, or the match was off and both guys would be suspended through the end of 2023. So Hangman came out, and my God, the promo this guy cut on Swerve. He just ate this guy for lunch. And Swerve just, his reaction to it was incredible. And finally, the big payoff was Hangman saying, you know, they said we couldn't touch, but they didn't say anything about Nana. And he attacks Nana and he lays him out, and Swerve can't save Nana. He's not allowed to touch Hangman. So he has to stand there and watch. They send out a bunch of blokes to make the save. Hangman kills these dudes, lays them out, hits a buckshot on one of them. This was the hottest that Hangman has felt in a long time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Swerve is perfect. Nana is perfect. Everything they do, every motion that they make, and they were perfect during that promo last night. And what that promo showed was you didn't have to do a breaking and entering. You could have had Swerve do some sort of felony that was not as corny and campy as what they did. A less the- corny felony on a wrestling show. Well, you know how Any it felony here. on a wrestling show is inherently corny. You would, yeah. So well, maybe you could have. You going to throw two dimes off the bridge again? <laughs> that was corny. Well, look, it could be a, 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 they could have done something else there, but the bottom line is this was a hard 180 from that. This is the, what Hangman needs to be a lot more often. So when he is the anxious millennial drinking cowboy that he is sometimes, you know, you have a reason and a story for it. This is the badass they actually need on their TV, and I hope they keep up this character, whether it's with Swerve or with somebody else for a while. We had Sky Blue and Red Velvet, which had absolutely zero heat heat early but, but they did get God, him, did it go long they did get him with some near falls there at the end and finally <sighs> sky hit a botch code blue and got the pin so she is in the three-way on saturday miro did a promo he wants garcia talked about that earlier talked about the uh tony storm mariah may thing 
Essentially, Mariah marked out for her. Tony said, I'm not doing autographs now. And Mariah said, well, if you need anything, let me know. So uh, Saturday's coming. And then Tony demanded a tune-up match. Samoa Joe killed John Cruz and then reminded MJF, you're in my hood. Once again, I extend my offer of friendship. In the best match on the show, the Young Bucks versus Penta and Commander, golly, they had a great match. And the crowd's going nuts for the Young Bucks because it's their hometown. And, you know, they're doing all their stuff and the people love it and everything. But then finally at the end, the ref's back is turned. Commander does a springboard. Nick punts this guy right in the balls. (laughs) And then he punts Penta right in the balls. Their hometown boos them. Cajones. And they hit the BTE trigger. Balls is not a bad word. uh, (laughs) It's sports byline. All they talk about is balls. Bouncing here and there. He hits Commander with the BT trigger, gets the pin. And then afterwards, they have a a thing backstage where Jericho and Kenny walk up. And Kenny is upset that they cheated. And Matt essentially says, and this is absolutely completely true, you know this is the best version of us. And then he notes, what about all your success? The best version of you. Not this one. And so Jericho just says, don't listen to these guys. These, don't know if I can say that word or not. It's an animal. He calls them jackasses. The animal, the donkey. Mm -hmm. And they get a big fight. Burrows. Separated by officials. Guns won a squash in five seconds. Made fun of MJF, said he was doomed. Wardlow then cut a promo on MJF. He's going to beat him up as well. And then, yes, golly. This is just the difference between me and I'm sure everybody in the chat. Powerhouse, Takeshita, Cage, and Kyle Fletcher versus Jericho, Kenny, Abushi, and Paul White. Too dangerous. I mean, God, hit each other with bikes, and the bump Kenny Okota Bushi took off that bike, and then Kenny breaks a beer bottle on, uh, I think it was on uh, Kyle Fletcher. Fletcher's head. His hands all cut all to heck. And then poor... Paul White can't move. He cannot move. And they brawl backstage. And and him and Hobbs are standing on this platform when they cut to the back. And Hobbs, he barely gets this dude up. Because they got so little room, it's like he can't even move his feet to better position himself. He has to just herk this guy up. It's like Hogan and Andre at Mania 3. It's it's (laughs) hip toss! Or I guess that was Yokozuna in Luger. (laughs) But anyway... He barely gets this guy up, and then he just tosses him off this platform. And Paul White took the most painful-looking, uncomfortable, horrible bump on this car. But he slid and off he's the hood dead. and looked good. I'm like, God, is anybody going to survive this thing? And then finally there at the end, uh, the finish was one-winged angel on cage. I mean, they all worked hard, like too hard, and just dudes getting killed left and right. If you enjoyed it, happy for you. I was in mortal fear through all of this. Terrifying in spots. And then MJF came out for a promo and basically said he's a man at the top of the mountain. He ain't got no friends. And all these mountain climbers, I guess that'd be uh, Darby. He's going to climb Everest. They're all climbing and knock him off the perch. But damn it, he's not getting knocked off his perch. And he's going to teach... Jay White a lesson on Saturday night. And so Jay White comes out. He says, come on. You're pretending to be a hero. You're a villain. You always will be. You're not fooling anybody with that devil mask. You've told people you're the devil. Nobody's on your level. But you're not the hero. These fans are going to drop you. You mean nothing to them, and they mean nothing to you. And so he tells the Bullet Club Gold to get him. They hit the ring. Juice lays him out with the punch. Guns hit 310 to Yuma. Jay hits the Blade Runner. Juice counts the pin on MJF, Lenny. Juice counted the pin as Jay White pinned MJF. And then Samoa Joe just watched on. So that's the final build on the A show for Full Gear coming up on Saturday. And I think Uh, it's pretty clear what's happening in a lot of these matches. Get your quarters ready, sucker. Get ready to mail them out, yeah. out to, to Washington State. I was doing the math. The quarter machines nowadays are they're yeah. on average. Well, I shouldn't say average. 
Most of most of the toys are fifty cents each, so it's two quarters. Mm-hmm. So by my math, each of my uh, children will get to go to the machine uh, two hundred times, mm. and uh, that will bring them great joy. Well, it's better than taking those quarters and putting them in the Coin Star machine inside that place because you're going to lose like fifteen cents off every dollar. That's a hundred toys they'll get out of that machine because of this bet. Yeah, Lenny, look at that. Yeah, look Lenny, you're doing you. a good thing for the children. The children. Yes, it's mm. just cheap. Anyway, that was that. Yeah. So uh, I guess the only real thing to uh, discuss about Sunday is uh, the match. You'll be doing your so show? I, well, I look at all of this stuff. It's like, obviously, MJF wins, Tony Storm wins. Yeah. And uh, I don't know about the tag match. probably doesn't matter. And Statlander, I'm sure, wins. I'm sure Hangman wins. Uh, don't know about the Sting match. I guess we'll have to see where they're going. But the Golden Jets are going to win, and uh, MJF and his mystery partner are probably going to win. So that leaves... Uh, Why would you know, the Golden Jets win, though? Because they have to disband if they lose. And they've, they've been cares? together for three weeks. It doesn't make that's, any sense. But that's They've the whole got thing shirts. Is- they've got everything. But that's the whole thing. Well, who cares? People buy shirts no matter what. Like, the NWO hasn't been around for a long time. People are still buying those shirts for God knows what reason. But when it comes to, like, they don't have to, like, be a team all the time. And the Young Bucks at some point need to win. Don't they technically have a contender spot, a Yeah, and shot? that's on the line. Mm. And they're going to lose it to the Golden Jets. That's, now I couldn't nah, even make my like talking it. point. Go ahead. I'll do it after the do. break. Observer Live. Well, my point that I was trying to make was Sorry. about Orange and Moxley because that one is in great doubt to me because here's the deal. Moxley was never supposed to win the title. He's supposed to beat Orange and he was supposed to do whatever he was going to do. And something happened, obviously, and he uh, he got hurt. He called an audible. Phoenix got the title. Phoenix then got hurt and Orange won from Phoenix. So now they're booking the exact same match again. And, you know, when Tony comes up with an idea, he likes to do his idea. And when things get in the way of his idea, he waits and waits and waits, and then he goes right back to his idea again. So, and I I look at this match, and my first thought is, well, he's just going to go right back. We're going to just get a repeat. Moxley destroys him, and then Moxley's the champion, and we're right back to where we were before Moxley got hurt. But I think that would be a terrible idea. And I think that the the best-case scenario is, okay, fine. You want to go back to Moxley as champ. That's great. Doesn't have to be now. Let Orange Cassidy win. Let him show that he can beat John Moxley. And now they're one and one. Moxley beat him on one pay-per-view. Orange beat him on this pay-per-view. Got to have a rubber match at some point down the road, two, three months. Some stip, some sore, I don't know what it is. And uh, then Moxley can get his win, and you can do whatever you were going to do with the guy. But I think just doing an exact repeat of the next pay-per-view, beating Orange Cassidy twice in a row from John Moxley, I don't know, man. I'm not a fan of 50-50 booking, but Orange is such a valuable commodity in this company. I don't like the idea of just beating him again. It seems like there's better ways that you could do it. But more on this tonight on the Brian and Vinny Show. 9 Pacific, Midnight Eastern, video.f4wonline.com. Podcast at wrestlingobserver.com. We got great stuff coming up. Mike will be here, I think, tomorrow. Yes, he will. I will With filthy. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that'll be exciting. Well, check it out, everybody. That's it. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.